Hi golfers, Rob Cheney here from Golf Tech Singapore. This week's video we're going to discuss the hips and the pelvis, how they move throughout the swing. This subject is incredibly important, it's how the best ball strikers separate themselves from the poorest players. And using Golf Tech's new Optimotion measurement system, I'm going to show you how the hips move throughout the swing, when to turn them, when to sway, and when to push up off the ground. Swing. That was a good swing. So I think this subject is extremely important. I've made multiple videos on the hips before, uh, one of which I even titled the holy grail of the golf swing. I genuinely believe it's that important and sp I spend a lot of time helping golfers to develop this movement in their swing, particularly new golfers who don't have a concept of how to move that pelvis and to move their weight correctly throughout the swing. So when it comes to discussing the hips, we're going to talk today about the rotation, and the sway and how much they should sway. I get a lot of questions, what starts the downswing? Where should my weight be at the top of the backswing? Where should my weight be in the downswing? We're gonna try and cover all of those things today. And what I did is jumped on the mat and I've hit one shot and it's just a basic standard outline uh, template, my, my basic standard swing. To show you that good golfers and good ball strikers control both the contact they make with the ball and the ground and their swing path by moving their pelvis in a, in a very particular way. So let's just start to get into the detail of this and try to make some sense and answer those questions you've got about how to move your hips in the golf swing. Okay, so as we get into the swing here, um, you see the hip sway is currently measuring 0.0, .0 inches from, from away from the target. That's what that A stands for here. If I move it slightly, it's actually gonna to change to a T. We're measuring the hip sway here at Golf Tech, either towards the target or away from the target. And that's the center of the pelvis. So if you took a point between the left hip, the right hip, the belt buckle and the tailbone, and you imagine the point in the center of your pelvis, it's really what we're measuring. Um, and I'm also gonna just pop a line on my left hip and my right hip, uh, just for visual purposes from a two-dimensional point of view, just to help you see this, because if you're filming your swing at home and want to check this, it's gonna be far easier for you to use the two-dimensional references than the three-dimensional ones, because you're probably not measuring your swing in 3D. So, as we move into the backswing, I often get asked the question, where should the weight go? How much does the weight shift? What happens? Um, in summary and, and basic form, that there really is no significant hip sway in the backswing either towards the target or away from the target. So I mean that the hips turn but stay very centered and we're gonna see that demonstrated here. As I do start to move the club away from the, from the ball here, there is a very small, very small shift away from the target up to kind of 0.2 of, a, of an inch. As I said earlier, it's, almost, it's very minimal. Um, and by the time my left arm gets parallel with the ground here, stayed fairly similar, very centered. You look at how that, those hips are turning, staying within those two little white checkpoints there that I made. The hips are rotating and the shoulders are turning. So by the time I reach the top of the swing, just before I reach the end of my backswing, there's a definite sign of what's to come, which is the hip slide or the shift towards the target is beginning to happen. And that's beginning to happen in the best players before they reach the end of their backswing. So I don't necessarily want you to think about this as you finish the backswing and then the downswing starts. For the best players, the downswing, particularly the lower body movement, the hips in this case, are beginning to move back towards the target before the golf has completed their turn on the backswing. It's pretty important stuff to know because that's definitely something that better players possess in terms of their pattern. So as I reach the top, I've made it to half an inch or so towards the target. But what you're gonna see from here is how that slight shift that started just before the end of my backswing becomes far more significant in early downswing and into the transition. It's probably one of the most asked questions that I get in lessons and even online is what starts the downswing? Again, I've made videos about this in the past. Do the hips turn, do the hips slide? What I'm gonna show you today and with the help of the Optimotion measurement help you to appreciate is how it's almost 
two stages to the way the pelvis moves in the downswing. The first stage is a shift or a sway towards the target. So we go from a very centered backswing with a slight preference towards slightly towards the target as I begin to transition. But in early downswing, look at how quickly my hips and pelvis start to move forward. By the time my left arm's parallel with the ground, it's moved more than two inches further forward than it was at the top. And by the time the shaft is parallel to the ground on the downswing, it's moved a further inch forward. So three inches of pelvic sway towards the target in the early downswing. That's critical. It's really important. It helps you to get uh, the low point of your swing far enough forward and then allows what's going to happen next to occur in terms of my rotations. But this would be the single biggest differentiator I see on a daily basis of different ball striking potential, i.e. the best players do this. The best ball strikers get their hips forward early, they set that point early in their downswing so that their low point's under control and they start to make more consistent contact. The golfers who I find have the most difficulty making consistent contact never ever get this far forward and certainly don't get this far forward this early in the downswing. So the emphasis here is on what starts the downswing, it's a hip sway or a hip, sh hip shift towards the target. So if we can define the early downswing hip movement as a sway or a shift, we can define the rest of it from here as mostly rotation. So once you notice the shaft parallel to the ground there, we've got three and a half inches towards the target. By the time I get to impact, 3.6, and the time I get to right arm parallel in the follow through, 3.8, my hips have continued to move forwards. They've continued to shift towards the target. That would continue to be a weight shift of some description. But they haven't just kept going at the same rate they did to begin with. And what they've begun to do now is they've started to turn. So the rotational part of the hip movement in the swing happens later. So it would be an early downswing would be a shift or a slide, not too much rotation. Then once you get to that sort of shaft parallel to the ground position of P6, you're going to then notice how the hip almost stays where it is and turns more around that point. And right up to the end of the swing, I've got it to 5.1 inches towards the target. So the overall message there is the hips never really move back. Okay, even in the, in the entirety of the backswing, they never really moved outside of those two little checkpoints I've got on my left and my right hip. You watch the best golfers in the world, they tend to demonstrate that. The second piece to note is how the shift of the hips towards the target happens or begins to happen before golfers finish their backswing. So you, as you're just reaching the end of the backswing, there's a, there's a movement already with the lower body towards the target. We'll see that in the late backswing here. The next point is that there's a strong shift towards the target in the early downswing, 2.7, 3.4, continuing to move laterally towards the target. And whilst my hips are certainly opening and rotating at this point, the emphasis is on the sway and the shift part. Once I get them forward and I get into this position here, I'm now going to use more rotation to bring that club round and straighten my swing path. So the second part of the downswing would be more rotational with the legs straightening and the hips pushing forward and continuing to move forward throughout the follow through. So over five inches of pelvic sway towards the target throughout the swing. This image is one I wanted to show you. I found it online. This is one of my favorite follows on the internet. This, these guys are called Athletic Motion Golf. If you don't already follow them on Facebook, Instagram, you should be. Some of the content these guys put out is phenomenal. I really liked this image of a golfer from the rear view where we take their silhouette at setup and then you notice, I think quite clearly, how much the pelvis moves forward in that early downswing. And from this angle, without the arms and the club to uh, confuse and complicate things, it's very easy to see the, the, the hips and the pelvis movement on its own. Lots of lateral shift early in the downswing and then more rotational into the follow through. I think that helps to paint the picture that I was trying to paint today. And it's one that I really want you guys to be able to take away and use. So if you're struggling with your ball striking, take this message 
film your swing, you know how much I tell you guys to film your swing. Film your swing from face on, put a checkpoint on that, uh, the hips, especially that, especially that front hip, and go ahead and film and see how far in front of that mark you make it, how far in front of that mark you can get by the time the club is parallel with the ground in the downswing. Guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful and educational as ever. It's really important that we're able to measure in this detail because golf swings happen at such a fast pace and such fast speed that being able to highlight and identify these movement patterns and in many cases these movement deficiencies that you have help us to be able to help you improve much more quickly. If you haven't had your swing measured uh, by Golf Tech on the Optimotion system, I strongly recommend you go in and get it done. It's an, an enlightening experience now that we don't have to wear the, the uh, sensors and you can go ahead and go and find out what your tendencies are and what your pattern looks like. Once you know your pattern, it's much easier to put in place the prescribed fixes and, and the practice that you need to do to help you improve your game. If you did enjoy this week's video, do go ahead and hit that like button feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. If you have any questions about this week's video, please go ahead and post your questions down in the comments section. I enjoy responding to everyone. I read all of them and I do my best to reply as best I can. But until next time guys, do take care, go out there, play golf, stay safe, and I'll see you very soon for another video.